Hi everyone, I'm Dr. Shweta Goswami, Medical Director, Ziva Fertility. We're based out of Noida in Delhi NCR. Uh, today I want to talk about an uh, important topic which is egg retrieval procedure. So, uh, which as we all know is one of the very important steps of the whole part of the IVF procedure. So, IVF procedure in short as we know entails taking injections and stimulation for about two weeks so that we get multiple eggs. And then once these eggs are mature, a final trigger shot is given after which these eggs are retrieved under anesthesia. So first of all, we are coming to what precautions we need to take right before the egg retrieval procedure and on the day of the procedure. So as uh, if you're going through the IVF stimulation, you would uh, know and understand that you would be already be on about 10, 12, 13 days of stimulation and injections when you would be told about the final uh, day of the egg retrieval and what precautions to take. So the important thing is most important that we have to take the trigger at the right time because sometimes we can go wrong on that. So on the 12th, 13th day when the follicles are ripe and the injection and they are now ready for the maturation, we have to give a final trigger shot. The trigger shot which is usually given for ovulation but in IVF it is given to mature the eggs finally. Now for example if you have a procedure say on Saturday morning at 10 o'clock then usually between 34 to 36 hours prior to that it is given. So sometimes people mistake and take it a day prior, which is Friday night, but not at all. We need to take it on Thursday night. So therefore, that is the final day of injections when you have to take the trigger and the trigger time is very important. There are usually two types of triggers. One is an HCG shot. The other is a GNH RH Ignis trigger, which your doctor would discuss with you. But either of which has to be taken meticulously at the right time written because the eggs are extracted at a precise time. So there is a you know narrow window of about two to two hours or so when we have to do the egg retrieval. So again, so taking up the example, for example, if you have to take the trigger at midnight on Thursday night, that's usually your last day of injections and there then would be an injection free day. And that's an important thing to do. If you've been given an HCG trigger, at some of the centers, there's a protocol that we would also do a home pregnancy test the next day, basically because it is the HCG which is measured in the home pregnancy test. It is just a surrogate way of making sure you've taken the right injection at the right time, because if you've missed taking it or the injection hasn't worked well, then the problem of empty follicle syndrome comes up that we may not get a single egg. So all the effort that we've put in for the last 12, 13 days may go as a waste. So as a precautionary measure, at least we here at Ziva do that for a routine that if somebody is given an HCG trigger, then we check that and make sure you would get a very faint line on the home pregnancy test. We also tell our patients it does not mean there is any sign of pregnancy. It is just the injection which is showing up in the urine test. Just in case the home pregnancy test does not even show the second line, please consult your doctor or their team immediately. There's no need to panic, but usually some blood tests etc. would be done. It would be confirmed whether the trigger has been rightly given and whether we should go ahead with the egg retrieval. Second, a pre-anesthetic checkup might be done or at least your reports would be checked that you're all fit for anesthesia because the egg retrieval procedure is usually done under short sedation or short anesthesia and therefore at least all the requisite tests should have been done. On the day of the procedure, depending on when it's been done, so for example, if it's routinely done in the morning, then you would require at least an eight hours fasting. So if it's done in the morning at eight, nine o'clock, you would be asked to come in a completely empty stomach on that day, which means after 12 midnight routinely for a morning procedure, you would not take water. And when we say empty stomach, we mean no water, no tea, no biscuits. It doesn't mean you can just take water. Only people who take some thyroid or other medications would take that with a sip of water. If there's any part preparation should be done, you should do that. And the instructions would be given to you by the staff. Plus any makeup, especially nail polishes, etc. must definitely be removed. And then of course, we have to make sure we've taken our trigger right. We carry our file with us. Another important thing is mostly it, uh, because husbands would also need to give their uh, you know, sample on that day because uh, the fertilization in the lab would happen on the same day. Then husbands are also requested to have an abstinence of three to five days. And the ideal is three to five, which means it shouldn't be less than two days. It shouldn't be more than five, six days either. Sometimes people, because they're not trying that month, just tend to think, oh, it's okay, we have a seven, 10 day gap. It's been scientifically seen that a long abstinence is never good for sperm quality. So that's another important precaution that we could take. So on the morning of the procedure, we should then come, you know, mentally prepared. Of course, uh, as any uh, team member would have discussed with you, we're hoping that we would get at least 80-90% of the follicles that we've seen uh, getting into the eggs. 
but it's a procedure uh, where nobody knows so zero to the final number it could be 10 12 is the number that we're looking at and we have to be mentally prepared that it's the day that egg quality and number would finally be retrieved so then once the egg retrieval procedure happens your empty stomach it's mild sedation they would put you an intravenous cannula uh, explain to you the procedure give you anesthesia there's usually no cut it is a vaginal procedure so there are no incisions etc then you would be completely sedated so it's not a painful procedure one doesn't really need to worry about that it's a quick procedure it usually gets over in 10 to 30 minutes depending on the number of eggs and how difficult or easy uh, is the egg retrieval procedure at the same time uh, the lab keeps checking the egg retrieval and tells us how many eggs we are getting at the completion of a procedure bleeding and homeostasis is uh, confirmed that you're not bleeding and then you're shifted out into the post procedure room Typically, because you've got some mild anesthesia, you'd be observed for about two, three hours for any problems. If you develop any vomiting, any dizziness, uh, you know, your pulse, blood pressure, vitals would be monitored. Any extreme pain or bleeding would be reported. And after you've uh, you know, passed urine, you're healthy and you're not having any bleeding, it would be good to go back home. On the day of egg retrieval, you would be given a set of medications, some oral and vaginal that we should take, which would help uh, in the fresh embryo transfer if in case it's uh, done, plus some usual antibiotics, etc., and uh, painkillers, etc., are also uh, advised. So, and because it's the day that you've got anesthesia, it's good to take some light food. So, maybe when you go home, take just something light like curd, rice, porridge, etc. And but usually, 90% of women should be good to go back to work or be back to you know their healthy state the very next day. So, it's just the day of the egg retrieval that we need to uh, take it easy. After that, of course, the important things start in the lab and that uh, your doctor would call you back after a couple of days to, you know, uh, tell you about how lab, the things progressed in lab, how many embryos formed of what quality, etc. And that's an important discussion point. But I think by and large, if you talk about the egg retrieval day, which is a very important day of uh, the IVF procedure, before procedure and post procedure, these are the important precautions and steps to keep in mind. All the very best.